17.5 degrees, angle B is 72.5 degrees, and angle C is 90 degrees. Okay, now what happens if you're given instead a side and an angle? Well, we're still asked to solve the triangle, which means to find all of those missing parts. Um, so in this case, we are missing the length of side A, the length of side B, and we're missing the measures of angles A and C. We already know the measure of angle B. It, they told us it was 41 degrees. Okay. Well, angle C again is easy. It's the 90 degree angle. <laughs> it's a right angle, so it's 90 degrees. Um, from there, we can easily find angle A uh, because the angles in a triangle add to be 180. And at this point, we know we have 90 um, taken up so far, so there's 90 left for angle A. Angle A and angle B in a right triangle add to be 90. Uh, so I get um, A plus 41 is 90, and I subtract 41 from both sides. And that tells me how much is left for angle A. 49 degrees. Okay, so, so far I have my three angles, angles A, B, and C. Uh, the other thing I need to find is these two sides. Now we can't use the Pythagorean theorem yet because if we feel in our given information here, all we know is the hypotenuse. We don't know either leg, and to use the Pythagorean theorem, you need to know at least one of them. So instead, what we're going to use is a trig ratio to find one of these two sides, and then we can use the Pythagorean theorem to finish up. Uh, so for our angle B, 41 degrees, just choose. Do you want to find A or B? Let's say I wanted to find A. Okay, so what I do here is I take for angle B, what do I have? I have the hypotenuse, okay? And I have A would be the adjacent side. So which trig function, sine, cosine, or tangent, uses adjacent and hypotenuse? That is the cosine. Cosine of angle B is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Okay, so that's why it's good to have those memorized. All right, so we write down our problem now. Cosine of our angle B, which we know is 41 degrees, equals the adjacent side, the adjacent side we did not know, we just know it's A, over the hypotenuse we know is 8. Now notice this is going to calculate a little differently. The, the variable we're solving for is here. To get this A by itself, we would have to multiply both sides by 8. Why would we do that? Well, it's divided by 8, so we do the opposite and multiply by 8. Notice our A is all by itself, so all we need to do now is take out our calculator and mul multiply 8 times the cosine of 41. This is not the inverse cosine, it's just the regular cosine. So do cosine of 41 and press equals, and then multiply by 8. You should get about 6 point, it's 6.037. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and round that to 6.04. Okay, so, so far I now have my other side. Okay, now from here you could use the Pythagorean theorem with your two sides to find your remaining side, or you could go ahead and use trig again. Let's say, just to practice, let's do that. Okay, so let's say instead we wanted to find B. Well, B for our angle, B, is the opposite side. So we're saying what would we have opposite and hypotenuse? Which trig function uses opposite and hypotenuse? That is the sine. The sine of angle B is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Put our values in. We know angle B is 41 degrees. We do not know our opposite side. We just know it's labeled B. We do know our hypotenuse is 8. And here to solve, again, it's divided by 8. So we do the opposite and multiply by 8. And there you go. Just take out a calculator and do 8 times the sine of 41. So sine 41 times 8. 
gives you about 5.25 if you round. Now, if you use the Pythagorean theorem, because of our rounding that we did on A, um, your answer will be just a slightly different than mine. If the rounding does change your answer, and here I did not have to do any rounding um, in my calculations. Okay, let's do another of those where we're given a side and an angle. Okay, so I'm going to put my information on the figure. Um, a was length 5 and angle A is 32 degrees. Alright, so we can find our remaining angles. What do we have left to find? We're going to have to find little b and little c and then we're going to have to find big B and big C. Well, big C we know is 90 degrees right off because it's our right angle. And then once again, we know A is 32 degrees. Um, A and B together have to be a total of 90, so that with our C we get 180. So A plus B is 90. If we know A is 32 degrees, subtract from both sides. we get 58 degrees for B. Okay. I could even go ahead and put that in my chart if I wanted, in my diagram. All right, next, we need to find B and C. So again, just choose which one you would like to find. Let's say I wanted to find B first. Okay. The angle I was given, this 32 degree angle, I have to look at what I have. I have the opposite side for that. And I'm trying to find the adjacent side, opposite and adjacent. So I say, what trig ratio uses opposite and adjacent? That is the tangent. Okay, tangent of angle A is the opposite side over the adjacent side. Put in the things that I know. I know that angle A is 32, so I know it's tangent 32 equals my opposite side 5 over my adjacent side length B. Now, once again, we have a little bit of different solving here. Um, the, I'm supposed to isolate B, but the first thing I would have to do is get it out of that denominator. And I would do that by multiplying both sides by B. That gives me B times the tangent of 32 is equal to 5. I'm still trying to isolate that B. Right now, now it's multiplied by tangent 32, which is just a number. Um, once we put that in our calculator, we'll see it. Okay, so to solve, it's multiplied by tangent 32, I would divide both sides by tangent 32, and that gives me my B, okay, and then all I need is a calculator <laughs> to finish that one out. So we do 5 divided by the tangent of 32, and notice again, it's a regular tangent, it's not the inverse tangent, and when I do that, I get about 8. Okay, so this is about 8. I did have to round. It was 8.001672. Alright, let's now find C. So if we're looking at C, okay, our given angle was A. Our given side over here was length 5. It's always to go with your best to go with your given rather than anything you've rounded. Okay, so we say, what do we have? Well, if we're trying to find C, that's our hypotenuse. And for angle A, again, 5 is the opposite. So what trig function uses opposite and hypotenuse? That is sine. Okay, sine of the angle is opposite over the hypotenuse. Put in the information we know. We know our angle is 32 degrees. Go sine 32 equals the opposite side 5 over our hypotenuse C. Again, we're trying to isolate C, but first we need to get it out of that denominator. So multiply both sides by C, and now we have 5 equals C times the sine of 32, okay? Um, we want that C by itself, so we divide both sides by the sine of 32. Now it's not quite as nice and clean <laughs> when we have it this way. And then all we have left is to use our calculator to calculate 5 divided by the sine of 32. Okay. 
you should get about 9.435. I'm going to round that off to the nearest tenth, 9.4. So I found all of my missing parts. B was about 8, C was about 9.4, angle B was 58 degrees, and angle C was 90. Okay, we are going to do one more of these. Um, if you've got the handle on it, great. You may want to stick around just to make sure. Maybe try it on your own, see what you get, um, and go from there. Okay, notice this time we're given that B is 4. Again, we're asked to solve the triangle, which means to find all of the missing parts. We were given length of side B, and we were given capital A, which is the measure of angle A is 12 degrees. So the parts we do not know are A, and C, the sides, and angle uh, B, and angle C. Again, angle C, right off the bat, we know is our right angle, so it's 90 degrees. Um, angle B, again, we know that the two angles that are left, A and B, have to add to be 90 for a total of 180. So we know A is 12, plus whatever B is is 90. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 12, and I will have the measure of angle B. And it is 78 degrees. Alright, so now I have both of my angles, all three of them. Uh, now I want to find those missing side lengths. So again, pick either A or C to solve for. Let's say I wanted to solve for A. Then I look at the given information. I have this angle, angle A, and I have this side. Well, for angle A, our A that we want is the opposite side, and the angle we're given is the adjacent side for angle A. So we say which trig function uses opposite and adjacent, and that just happens to be tangent. Tangent of an angle is opposite over adjacent. Put in the information we know. Do we know our angle? We do. It's 12 degrees. The opposite side is A. The adjacent side we know is 4. This one's pretty straightforward to solve. We want to isolate A. It's divided by 4. Oh, it's in the top. It's lovely when it's on top. Okay. It's on top of the fraction. All we have to do is multiply both sides by that 4 and use our calculator. 4 times the tangent of 12 is 0.85. So I found the measure of the side length A is 0.85. Now let's find C. So working with C, notice it's the hypotenuse of our triangle. Go back to your given information for our angle A. We had the adjacent side, length 4, and we're trying to find the uh, hypotenuse. So which trig function uses adjacent and hypotenuse, since that's what we're working with here? That is the cosine cosine of the angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's what we're going to use. Put in the information we know. We know our angle is 12 degrees. We know the adjacent side is 4. And our hypotenuse is C. Notice our C that we're trying to solve for is in the bottom. So we multiply by C to get it out of the denominator. C times the cosine of 12 equals 4. And then we would just divide both sides by cosine 12 and our C is alone and then we just need a calculator. Okay, so I would take out my calculator and calculate 4 divided by the cosine of 12. And you should get about 4. I get 4.09. Okay, and you may be asking um, why couldn't I just once I found A, put it in here and use the Pythagorean Theorem, and you absolutely can do that to find your hypotenuse. I just, I'm practicing you up on these. Um, one thing though is that we did round to 0.85, so if you use the Pythagorean Theorem, you're going to be off just a bit from what we got here, but you would be.